This is Liz Colburn, host of The Morning Uplift. Thank you for listening to the following broadcast on Public Health Media. This is Kim Meyer, the host of Choose to Rise here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Choose to Rise, where we talk about living with positive mindsets, how to increase our confidence, building our faith, and living out our life on purpose. A new show comes out via podcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you want to catch the episode live instead, stop by Public House Media around 645 Central Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Choose to Rise. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Welcome to Beauties and Headcanons, where we're nerdy and you probably are too. This is Emily and I'm here today with Lindsay and Elizabeth and we're here to talk nerdy to you. With Halloween fast approaching, it's we've been racking our brains to think of a topic that wasn't covered last year. Erica and I kind of went overboard and did a lot of Halloween stuff in October last year. And now that I have two new co-hosts with me, we were trying to figure out what we could talk about that hadn't already been covered. And while we were researching, we found some interesting tidbits about Halloween in the world of Harry Potter. So we'd like to share that information along with some of our own headcanons with you. So first, there's a bit of background we want to lay for you. Um, Why is Halloween so important for Harry Potter specifically? Um, I mean, and not just the wizarding world in general, because Halloween is a celebrated holiday in the wizarding world, but specifically for Harry Potter. Um, Maybe some of you already know this, but To get into some of the details, Halloween in 1981 was the night that Voldemort murdered Harry's parents, failed to kill Harry, and then, by failing to kill Harry, accidentally created a horcrux inside of Harry. So that date specifically is a very important date personally for Harry. And we don't really know a whole lot about Harry's years with the Dursleys, so we can't exactly say for certain whether things happened on Halloween while Harry was living with the Dursleys. But we do know that every year while Harry was at Hogwarts, until Voldemort's return at the end of Harry's fourth year, something happened on Halloween that disrupted the normal flow of their Halloween festivities. Like the first year was the troll, troll in the dungeon. (laughs) Everybody, that that line in the movie, just everybody knows it, whether you've seen the movie or not, I feel like. (laughs) And that's kind of the night that I think like the whole trio of Ron, Harry and Hermione kind of really actually came together and like gelled as a unit because yeah, like Mm -hmm. up until that point, like Harry and Ron were kind of together, but Hermione was just kind of separate and them all taking on the troll together kind of I think drew them together and you know made them a formidable team for the rest of the year right and that was actually the first time wasn't it that um Hermione like stood up for the group and took the fall to McGonagall yeah. and said no yeah. they came down to get me <laughs> exactly it was like the first time she took a hit um as a student and it actually became part of the group and even so lied about what she was doing yeah. there <gasps> yeah exactly lied to a, a person of authority right oh, her mind mm-hmm. towing that line <laughs> i know she's such a rebel <laughs> i know and then in the second year there was the um, chamber of secrets being opened and the blood writing on the wall uh, the enemies of the air beware and so on um and then, you know, that that in and of itself was really creepy. Like, I remember reading that for the first time, and I was like, I had chills because it said it was written in blood on the wall. And I'm like, oh, somebody died. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, so scared when I was reading because I saw, like, they had found Mrs. Norris. And yeah, I'm a cat lover, so I'm like, oh, no, no, not the cat, not the cat. Uh-huh. I, I was so glad when we found out like she was just petrified. I'm like, okay, it's it's reversible mm-hmm. in some way. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Like, <laughs> oh, and it was just the cat at first too. Yeah, although it eventually started spreading. But Halloween was yeah. the very first time that the basilisk struck. Uh huh. Exactly. Yep. And then the third year was when. Well, first of all, the Grim was like the sign of the of of harry's like 
you know, his divination class and everything like that. Um, you know, the, the dog, the face of the dark dog. But really, it was just trying to say that Sirius Black, who transfigures into a dog, is around. Um, and that Halloween in, his, in Harry's third year was when Sirius broke into the Gryffindor common room and he, like, terrorized the fat lady and her portrait or whatever. Um, and... I forget exactly. Did he get? She let him in because he like slashed her or something like that. Was that, that's how it worked, think right? He did or did he actually? He didn't actually get in. No, I, I don't think he did because I think he terrorized her and she like ran off. Oh, that's uh, right. And so then the portrait, portrait wouldn't hide. Yeah, that's right because she was in somebody else's portrait. Yeah, and, and then, then it wouldn't open. And find her. Right, I remember that. And there was like this big crowd at the at the portrait. Like, what? Where is? We can't get in. What's happening? Isn't that when Neville forgot the password? That's when they that, that happened a lot. Because <laughs> like everybody was going back to the dorm rooms after their little festivities. Yeah, and, like, there was this huge line outside the Gryffindor common room. That like, uh, did Neville forget the password again? Right, 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 right. And yeah. then Neville spoke. And I'm like, no, I'm back here. Right. <laughs> Poor Neville. That's right. Okay, I remember that. Yep. And then the fourth year. Um, was when Harry was chosen from the Goblet of Fire as the fourth contestant in the Trial Wizard tournament. Mm -hmm. Somehow crazy. Right. Magic. Number four out of three. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Fourth contestant of the Tri Wizard yeah. tournament. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> you put your name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry. <laughs> calmly. <laughs> calmly. Very calmly. And of course, that obviously sets off a huge chain of events that eventually leads to Voldemort finally coming back. Because, and exactly. you know, when I think about that, like, that's such a risky plan. Like, there's so much that has to go just right and work yeah. in order for the next steps of the plan to work and to actually, like, make it all happen. It's like, just it's one so true. misstep could have completely thrown all of their plans. So it's, you know, I, I guess you got to suspend a certain level of disbelief when it's like, it can very easily just go another way. <laughs> Yeah, like, like really, their only guy on the inside was Barty Crouch Jr. masquerading as as um, Mad Eye Moody. Really, that was the only guy. <laughs> yeah, and it's like he had to be very, very like on top of his polyjuice potion, so uh -huh. not only brewing it but taking it on time and everything right. like that. Uh, that's that's a lot to go through. I mean, me and my ADHD, I'd forget and be like, "Oh, whoops! I'm transforming back to myself." Crap, like, oh, look. <laughs> oh look, my skin looks weird. What's the <laughs> I totally love David Tennant, so it's hard for me to like even see him as, as a bad guy most of the time. So uh, it's, it's just difficult. I, know. But I I do have a soft spot in there somewhere for, <laughs> for Barty Crouch because I, I feel yes. like anyway. Um isn't there also though a uh alternate story where something doesn't go right with the Goblet of Fire uh, Triwizard Tournament. So it's, uh, I feel like I didn't read Curse, The Cursed Child and I haven't read very much like of anything um, beyond the original seven books. So I feel like I read something about, have, have either of you read Cursed Child or no? I have, I have not. I have the book. But I have the book too. And I had I started... access to it at some point, but I didn't read it. So I feel like there's something in there. And I know that there's lots of speculation about how it's not canon. Um, but I, I just feel very like that there's something there. It had something to do with the, the really cute boy who was also from Gryffindor. What's his name? Also from Gryffindor? He was from um... Was he not from Gryffindor? I don't know. Do you mean, do you mean he Cedric? Have to play He's from Hufflepuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's from Hufflepuff. Okay. Cedric. It's Cedric. Cedric Diggory. Cedric Diggory, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in this alternate universe, Cedric Diggory doesn't die. And I swear to you, I'm not making this up, but I do know that there was lots of outroar about it, having even be imagined. So imagine if all of that hadn't worked out, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Because, I mean, if, if they wouldn't have been able to, like, get Harry and everything, then, right. I mean, they wouldn't have been able to raise Lord Voldemort. Yeah, it was a very right, distinct exactly. plan. They had to definitely do it mm -hmm. the way they did it. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
I mean, they didn't necessarily have to kill Cedric, but they definitely needed to get Harry there. Right, right. And that, I mean, I also had a soft spot for Cedric Diggory, too, so. <laughs> like, instead like, of sharing, like, the credit with Cedric by both of them grabbing it at the same time, like, if Harry had just gone ahead as Cedric told him to do and just taken it, then Cedric actually would have still been alive. Probably would have ended up being, like, the Minister of Magic or something. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I had good Could plans for him. Yeah. And we've gone through this um, before. I'm not good at, like, imagining things differently than writers and casting people and directors do. I'm just not good at it. Whatever is, is, and that's it. I'm just not a very imaginative person. So it's hard for me to imagine things. We've talked about this with shipping people and stuff. Oh, so sure. I, I, We're not it's sending just them not places, something right? I'm good at. Um, <laughs> um, well, could it... Could that alternate storyline have something to do with... Have you seen a very Potter musical? No, but I want to. You totally definitely should. Um, because, first of all, the guy that plays Cedric in that is just hilarious. Um, <laughs> second of all, their their casting for Draco is also hilarious. Um, I'm not going to give anything away there, but it's great. Um uh it, and it's a musical so like it's fantastic you can sing along um but i i want to say in either a very potter musical or in a very potter sequel in one of those i want to say that something happened where they went to the graveyard and cedric didn't die he like i don't know some something different happened there and it was funny and hilarious and it was like totally a spoof on you know it's 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 a farce right it's great right yeah yeah it's hilarious i love it highly recommend what year is it that um nearly headless nick is celebrating his uh death day which was, was that october the second 31st year? i think that was the second was that okay. yeah yeah i think that's right because I think um, they were walking back from Nick's party when they stumbled upon that yes. message. Okay. That's right. That's right. I think that was also the year that they were, um, well, um, Sir Nicholas was very upset that he was not invited to the Headless Hunt as well. And so they don't show much about that in the movie either. Oh, yeah, but, but it's because he's they, not headless. He's nearly right. headless. He's nearly headless. Right. And that's why he doesn't like being called nearly headless is because he doesn't get invited to, to the headless. headless hunt. Well, I, yeah. I imagine it because he was being decapitated, there's a certain amount of pride that goes with that. Like it, it was in 1942, he was decapitated or 1842. I don't know, something 42, which I thought was cute because that's, 42 is a very special number to um, yeah. any nerdy geek ever. Yeah, um, it is. <laughs> but I did feel like it, it, there was a certain kind of pride in that. Like if you're going to be decapitated, you better have done something awesome. And right. I would like the backstory on nearly headless Nick as to what exactly he did in order to be decapitated on Halloween. I mean, let's be serious. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember reading about that in the books, but I, I remember he complained that whoever did it was just could totally incompetent and obviously right, like, right. can't even decapitate a person correctly. I mean, right? Yes, you exactly. One job. Okay. Like, we can do to me, like you know, just do it right, do it competently. Yeah. <laughs> we can we can do the math here. So, nearly headless Nick's birth or a death day party was in pro, what nineteen ninety two. Yes, and so yes. it was what like one hundred fifty years. So it would have oh, been eighteen forty two. 1842, 92. yes. Yep. Yeah, 1842 42 to 92. Right. Just, just so it would have been 150 years. So it was 1842. Correct. Was when he was decapitated ish. Yes. We figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I am still reeling from uh, 1981 being the year that Harry's folks um, were killed because right? I, I suppose I never realized that Harry is older than me. That's. I never, yeah. Mind. Like I, I, um, reading the books i just assumed it was in the present day right like in the current time and then seeing the movies i thought about it some more and i'm like they never have a cell phone yes. they never like use a computer even though computers were existed they just didn't you know like you don't see one in the dursley's house mm -hmm. well, or anything know, like that that's funny well, too computer games which back in like you know the early 90s oh that true that would have that that there. been pretty appropriate because I remember in the early nineties, they had in early to mid nineties, they had all kinds of like DOS based games that you could yeah. do on the computer. 
I played all of those DOS based games. <laughs> so I was I've been watching um, a show with a friend of mine who was telling me that I have to remember that there's three separate realities going on in this show. And um, he, he well, he's wrong. It's actually three separate parts of the same timeline and all the same reality. So it's, it's not exactly the way that he was talking about it. But what I think is very interesting is how we interpret what's going on in a book or a movie or a television show based off of our own personal timeline and where we actually are. And I, I feel like we've kind of touched on this before, um, but I think it's really important when you're looking at Harry Potter, because we've, we've talked about, you know, your perceptions of things when we read them for the first time mm -hmm. or when we read them for the second time or when we saw the movies or watched them with our children or, or whatever other part of our, uh, Harry Potter experience has been, but it's interesting to me too now that there's so many different things that are coming up. Where there's Harry Potter conventions, um, whole towns that are turning themselves into a Harry Potter Wonderland, um, the Disney World event, the uh, Universal Studios would be yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Universal Studios. People are buying wands. Right. So you can get remotes that are also wands that can turn your television, all of that stuff. So I feel like it's very, um, it's growing with us. But I do know that Harry Potter was much more of a children's thing when I was a child than it is now, where it's very yeah. Um, yeah, advanced I would agree. for me. Well, I think that's because the target audience when the books first came out is now yeah. grown and adult. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, obviously a lot of them still like Harry Potter. And so now they're like, okay, well, you know, it's still kind of a kid's thing, but we also have to kind of compensate for having a bunch of adult fans now. <laughs> right. And all of the like logistics sure. and, you know, higher levels of thinking that comes along with that. Because grownups try to actually figure things out. You know, children don't necessarily second right, guess right. certain things. <laughs> so... Yeah, it wasn't something I was concerned with back yeah. then, but now I totally want to know what kind of animal this is from Fantastic Beasts. And I want to know, um, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos of different uh, people's contributions, but at the same time, they do make sense. And that Halloween feast that they have looks oh like goodness, an epic yes. thing. And well, I want to go. It's kind of like their <laughs> Thanksgiving because they don't celebrate Thanksgiving like we do in America. You know? Yeah, so it's like their kind of midwinter holiday before you Yeah. Are. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're they're like transition from fall to winter kind of deal. Yeah. I wanna be at that feast, like when they go and get butterbeer and Oh, so there's yeah, there's a couple times when they go there. The first time they go there, um, Harry was using the invisibility cloak, but I think they snuck in. But then well they were gonna go there um a different year was it the fourth year or the sixth year it was the sixth year that they went and um um the potions professor slughorn slughorn that's where the h came from the horn um so slughorn meets them there and hermione had like maybe a little too much butterbeer that i guess kind of gets you a little drunk but doesn't i don't know i can't really tell um but they were drinking butterbeer and Slughorn met up with them and like Ron was invisible. Well, I think, isn't the age of drinking in the UK lower? Yeah, it's like 18. So none of the Hogwarts students would have still been legal to drink anyways, necessarily. Well, but the Wizarding World, who knows? Wizarding World, it could be different too. It could be, yeah. Their age I mean, majority it, is 17 and, yeah, you know. I mean, it could be 16 for the Wizarding World because that's, isn't that the age that you can use magic? outside of Hogwarts? Uh, 17, yeah. 17? Okay. You know, I find it really interesting that, like, I'm, at least until up until Voldemort returned, that all of these different things were happening on Halloween that were documented. I kind of wonder about all the Halloweens that happened before, because, yeah. and this is like maybe just my own hit canon that I developed. For one, I actually didn't realize what all was that all of these events were actually happening on Halloween. I didn't like actually draw that conclusion until 
Um, I read that article on Pottermore talking about it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that either until I read the article. Yeah. So like, that's the mm -hmm. background stuff that we talked about earlier of each of those events happening first year. The only one I specifically remembered happening on Halloween was the troll in the dungeon, and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, like every other one, like I didn't actually like draw that conclusion, like in yeah. the dots. But I kind of wonder if that was before Voldemort came back. That was kind of his way of trying, like his spirit's way of trying to reach out and make a connection because like it Maybe. stops obviously after Voldemort comes back. So I kind of wonder if somehow that's connected to when he died on Halloween and if perhaps yeah. he would have died on another day then maybe those events would happen on another day. That's an interesting to. thought of like, well, and especially with like the basilisk thing happening. Yeah. Because that was his, uh, you know, a combination I mean, he of like was, the diary, you know, correct. And he was the heir of Slytherin. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I kind of wonder if it's all connected to Voldemort dying on that day. Uh-huh. I mean, it totally could be too. Like, and then I don't know what you know. While while Harry was at the Dursleys, like, we know that that Vernon w w was very skeptical about Harry's funny business. Yes, um, I, I remember. I distinctly <laughs> remember that line in the first movie when they're getting ready to go to the zoo, mm -hmm. and and he s takes Harry aside right next to the car, and he goes, "No funny business." And he does that face thing that he, yes. that he does and, and that, um, you know, the way he says it, it's just very memorable. And I'm like, something has happened with Harry before, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I find it so funny that, like, he's all very skeptical about magic and like, oh, magic isn't real and everything. But yet at the same time, he, like, keeps a really close eye on Harry and right. what Harry's doing. It's like, well, if you don't believe, then why are you even keeping such a close eye on him? Because if it doesn't exist, then... What, where's the threat? Yeah. I'll see. I always thought that that pertained back to his father. And oh. uh, him being so much like his father. So you say no bit funny business because James was such a trickster. <laughs> that could be it too. Okay. Although I don't know how well they knew James. Because yeah, Lily... I don't think they knew him that was well. Petunia's, Lily was Petunia's sister. And they kind of disowned... Like Petunia just kind of disowned Lily after they found out she was a witch yeah i mean i guess i just always thought the reputation was so skewed yeah for them that's true that's true um and and you know how you can make things up in your head yeah. and, and make them real like you can imagine someone to be a certain way and then you'll only see that that side of the it. evidence yep. of that yeah. yeah i almost felt like that was kind of um part of the situation mm -hmm. you know they um things had gone so sour with lily and james that they imagined more than what was actually happening as to um, how bad things were, how bad things could be. But I mean, I guess that's sort of like the, the believer in me that all people are, are good until proven otherwise and all that nonsense, because I, I always want people to not be as awful as they are, but <laughs> yeah. I know there's awful people, <laughs> especially if anybody's going to be awful, it would be oh, the yeah, nurse. Least, right. So. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And also muggles anyway. Yeah. There is an, an interesting, um, I guess maybe another topic for another episode because we're getting close to our time here. But the, the well, reason why the Dursleys were so awful, having to do with Harry uh, living with them for so many years, being a Horcrux. Yeah, I, I, mean, um, I thought of like, that too, because, you know, even when Ron was like, you know, wearing the... Uh, the necklace and everything like he yeah he became so different than what he normally is and yeah harry is a horcrux and i mean obviously i don't think the dursleys beforehand were like all that great yeah, sunshine and rainbow but <laughs> i still think that harry having that piece of the horcrux in him still influenced them and possibly made them even worse than they already were yeah but then wouldn't we have seen evidence of that while he was at hogwarts too he was still a horcrux well, I mean, maybe maybe some of the students acting out was possibly a result of that. For I mean, maybe maybe Draco's propensity to pick on Harry was made worse. It could have been because I mean, then, obviously uh, he was kind of a uppity and everything like that. But exposed yeah. to that, maybe just kind of that almost that makes out. sense though, because you know when you when you think you're being picked on or when you think you've got something to prove, you amp it mm -hmm. up, you rev it up. Yeah. 
So if he felt threatened just by the aura of the Horcrux, then yeah. you want to defend yourself before you needed yeah. to be defended. And I mean, it seems like Harry in general, aside from like, you know, Ron and Hermione, didn't really have a whole lot of like really good friends at Hogwarts. Like aside, yeah. aside yeah, from they're... them, like there were students that he was friendly with, but you know, whenever something would happen and it was something about Harry or like surrounding Harry, they always seemed very ready to like turn against him. Yeah. yeah there was a hands-off kind of mentality yeah, yeah. there. It's totally true. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. I think it's very interesting for more, more than anything else that Halloween had this uh, timeline in it of Harry Potter that we hadn't noticed before. Yeah. That once it was pointed out to us, we've got all these ideas as to what's going on. And then um, did the timeline kind of just get all crazy in the last three books? Did it just go nuts? I mean, because Yeah, I think so. And that's kind of why it's started to be my headcanon now that it was related to Voldemort's mm -hmm. like, spirit. Because obviously since Voldemort was resurrected in the fourth book, there was no real need for his spirit to like reach out and try to do something on the date of his death because he was back. Right. And he could have, so then like the, whatever was left of Voldemort could have been trying to reach out towards the Horcrux that was in Harry. You know, he didn't know that it was in there. Um, but you know, it could have caused, um, in the first book, Quirrell to bring the troll in on that day because he just really, really needed to get back to, you know, being whole again. And, you know, the second year, same deal. Third year was Sirius Black. So that's a little bit different. I'm not sure how that one kind of relates. But there could also have been some kind of reason why Sirius Black came back. Like, yeah. let's say that Voldemort was revving up each year. And at that year mark, he was the strongest. So he was able to um, pull towards the Horcrux or... Um, proceed towards the Horcrux in some way, shape, or form. So some ethereal way. Then he gets strong enough to um, put off some kind of siren that Sirius Black recognizes and needs to needs to go warn Harry, needs to go and, and do something about it. Okay. It could, have, it could have been that that caused the rat uh, to like can basically oh. consent to be in that picture. Because yes. that's what initially right. set Sirius off. So I wonder if that was that's like right. a subtle influence to like, oh yeah, go ahead, you know, be in that picture. Sirius will go ahead and see it and he'll break in and possibly even show off some security uh, mm -hmm. holes <laughs> where yeah. you know, maybe Voldemort could take advantage of. And they had, he had a reputation as well as a prisoner of Azkaban to um, be this surly, awful um, uh, wizard. So there's this aura of him being bad as it were. So I don't know if he, maybe there was a stirring at Azkaban or some kind of uh, agitation mm -hmm. there that was causing alarm. I don't know. Yeah, it could have. It could have been anything. Yeah. Well, what to think about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like we got to call up JK Rowling and be like, Hey, yeah. we got this idea. Yeah. Got to tell us what's real here. <laughs> I suppose that's what we do here. Right. Yeah, With our yeah, hair cannons. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. Got to bring it yep. all around. Yep. Well, that's all we have for today, guys. Thanks for getting nerdy with us. Um, we just wanted to make sure that you still know you have the opportunity to talk nerdy to us. Find Beauties and Headcanons on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and now Instagram at PHM Beauties and Headcanons to share your nerdy topic suggestions. Subscribe to this podcast and others from Public House Media on iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, and wherever good podcasts are found. I make sure that I always download automatically on my app so that it's right there for me when I'm ready to listen. And um, we sh I honestly think you guys should too. We love feedback. So if you liked this episode, or even if you didn't, please give us a rating and a review so we can keep on making great episodes for you. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know what kinds of things you are thinking about for Halloween and for Harry Potter. And I'm Lindsay. I'm Emily. And I'm Elizabeth. And thanks for getting nerdy with us on Beauties and Headcanons.